So Science and Sport have made some big changes to their beta fuel range which is exciting for nutrition nerds like me. It's actually quite a subtle change if you aren't looking for it but from a nutrition and performance point of view it could make quite a dramatic difference and this change puts them in line with companies like Martin. Martin by the way are a company who provide sports supplements and sponsor athletes like Eliud Kipchoge and Jan Fredino just to mention a few. If you're here then I suspect you might be interested in the performance side of things so let's get into the changes and how they might affect you as an athlete. Okay, so what's up nutrition nerds and welcome back to another video. If you're new here by the way, then hey, my name's James and I'm a sport and exercise nutritionist, so I spend a lot of my time talking about those things. And before we get into the video, as a quick bit of transparency, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Science and Sport or Martin in any way. I do use their products, but there is no profit in this for me. Right, so with that out of the way, let's get into it. The big change that they've made to their beta fuel range is to the formula and specifically the carbohydrate makeup of it. You may have heard me talk about this before but when we're racing we need carbohydrates and the science and sport beta fuel range has been created to provide athletes with carbohydrates for racing. Previously their beta fuel range has provided about 80 grams of carbohydrates per serving, with the ratio being two to one of maltodextrin to fructose. So essentially twice as much maltodextrin, which is glucose, as fructose. And handily, I've got an old packet here, which is that two to one range which I was talking about. The big change that they've made is that this split of maltodextrin and fructose is more even, and they've changed it to one part maltodextrin to 0.8 fructose. James, you've made a video on a tiny little change like that. Well, hear me out. This is important as an athlete if you're considering using carbohydrate supplements because it can directly impact your performance. So just stick with me for a minute or two while I explain it for you. So we know the theory. We need to work hard. And for that, we need carbohydrates. So we use something like a carbohydrate drink or gel to provide our body with carbohydrates to fuel our muscles. And this means we don't have to use as much of our own body's source of carbohydrates, so there's a lower likelihood that we're going to bonk. Now, how much carbohydrate we can absorb and then use is limited by our body's mechanisms. In our gut, we essentially have little transporters which shuttle glucose and fructose from the inside of our gut into our bloodstream. And that glucose and fructose can then be used by our working muscles. Now, glucose and fructose have different transporters and slightly different uses in the body, but that's why there's a combination in many sports products. Overall, you're essentially increasing the amount of carbohydrates you can absorb and then use. Traditionally, sports supplements like the old beta fuel contain a ratio of two to one maltodextrin to fructose. The main company who aren't using this two to one ratio is Martin, and they use, surprise, surprise, a one to 0.8 ratio of maltodextrin to fructose, which science and sport are now doing as well. Now, what's the reason for this change? Well, it all comes from a 2013 by O'Brien and colleagues, where they investigated the carbohydrate oxidation rates in male cyclists. Essentially, they looked how much carbohydrate was absorbed and then used by the body. Now, you can read this for yourself if you're interested, but the long and short of it is that they found when male cyclists used a carbohydrate-based drink, with a 1 to 0.8 ratio of maltodextrin to fructose, they improved their carbohydrate oxidation rate by about 17% compared to when they used a drink with a 2 to 1 ratio. This is important because it means that the cyclists burned more carbohydrates when using the 1 to 0.8 ratio compared to the 2 to 1 ratio. And this is important because remember, we need as many carbohydrates available as possible when we work hard during exercise. So in context, when those cyclists use the 1 to 0.8 ratio, they burn through and use more carbohydrates, which meant there was more energy available for them during their exercise, which meant that they could better supply their muscles with energy. Furthermore, the results of the study demonstrated that the actual amount of carbohydrates absorbed from the gut and then used during exercise increased from 62% in the two to one group to 74% in the 1 to 0.8 group, meaning overall a higher total carbohydrate intake. 
That study also found a lower prevalence of nausea and stomach fullness in the 1 to 0.8 group compared to the 2 to 1 group, and a higher mean power output in all out sprint efforts at the end of a two hour endurance ride. All right, got it? <laughs> that was quite a lot to take in. But in simple terms, let's sum it up. Based on evidence from a 2013 study, a ratio of 1 to 0.8 of maltodextrin to fructose compared to a 2 to 1 ratio means more total carbohydrates absorbed and then used by the body during exercise, lower prevalence of gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea and stomach fullness, and a higher power in all out at the end of an endurance ride. Now, practically for you, and you may have worked this out already, but if you were to use a carbohydrate supplement with this sort of ratio when you're racing, you should be able to better fuel your muscles and work harder during your race, leading to an increased overall performance, which is definitely a big plus if you use science and sport products. And as I mentioned, Martin used this ratio and anecdotally, it works very well. Now here at Nutrition Triathlon, I always try to provide a little bit of balance. So let's run through a few things. Firstly, the results of one study should always be interpreted with caution. They used 12 male cyclists. Although 12 is a decent number, it's still not massive and they were all male. So can these results be applied to every triathlete out there, including females? Well, not necessarily, but the study was good and the results were quite clear. Plus, it's a case of using one sports product over another. And as the only current evidence we have available suggests that this 1 to 0.8 ratio is might be worth considering using something that contains that ratio. Importantly, does this mean that you should suddenly swap and just use science and sport beta fuel products? Again, not necessarily. If you have a carbohydrate supplement, which you already use and you find works well for you, it might be better to just stick with it. Potentially, it is better sticking with the devil you know than changing just for the sake of it. That's individual though, and I don't want too much. You've got to make your own decision and weigh up the pros and cons. But if you haven't ever properly considered your carbohydrate intake during racing and you want to fine tune your nutrition a little bit, now might be the time to consider what carbohydrate supplements you're actually using or are going to use during a race. The evidence is quite clear as well that using a glucose and fructose combination is superior when it comes to performance. So that's worth checking as well. Does the product that you're currently using just contain glucose or maltodextrin? Or does it contain a combination of maltodextrin and fructose? So this is worth checking when you're considering what you're using for your race nutrition. Now, whenever supplements, I always talk about safety from a doping point of view as well. All of science and sports products are batch tested under informed sport, which is a massive positive in my book. It means there's a much lower likelihood that they could contain banned substances, which is great. I have done a video on supplement guidance for athletes, by the way, which if you're interested, I've linked at the top of the screen for you. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. If you did find it useful, then I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and press subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to press that notification icon to get an alert when I release a new video and remember that subscribing is free. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next video. See ya.